Welcome back to Inside Politics. Our guest today, Metro Councilman Freddie O'Connell and State Senator Jeff Yarborough. They are our guests. They are supporters of the transit plan that is on the ballot May 1st. Uh, gentlemen, the uh, transit for Nashville group has been doing an awful lot of direct mail. I think I've gotten five pieces in the last three weeks from them. One of the most recent ones that I got, uh, and I'll quote what it says in there, it uses words like the right wing is using Trump-style lies to stop Nashville from making progress. Do you think they're trying to rile up the Democratic base in Nashville? I mean, the, the, Nashville's the big blue dot in the middle of a red sea in terms of Tennessee, but is that is that an effort to try to get Democrats to come out and vote for this? I mean, there's already a Democratic primary. Do, does that need to be pushed more to get out for this referendum? You know, I, if I hear that, I think about, again, um, what we know now that the disclosures are out. and. Right. I mean, to Senator Yarbrough's point, there has been a lot of specifically paid misinformation, right? We've now watched the Tennessean, unfortunately, get some egg on its face after accepting an op-ed with a fake photograph and a pen name intentionally misled by the group of people that submitted that. We've watched the Tennessee Tribune, uh, you know, one of Nashville's two prominent black newspapers have to uh, respond to the fact that one of the ads placed specifically by the opposition had misinformation that had to be publicly corrected, right? So I don't think there's any inaccuracy to the fact that this is a, a campaign of misinformation, and I do think it's important that people understand that. Another flyer that was in the newspaper, one of those inserts at the very front of it, uh, had some information that they said that an average house in Nashville will pay forty-three thousand dollars for this. Is is that is that misinformation? This is Why one is of that the wrong? Dumbest things that's been said in public discourse in a long time. In order for a household to pay forty-three thousand dollars, you would have to spend between four point three million and eight point six million at Nashville retail locations. That's the only way that would happen. For almost everybody in the city, that would require winning a Powerball, not. Uh, not normal course of events. This is, you look at the, it's a nickel or a dime when you spend ten dollars. It is five to ten bucks a month for almost every family and uh, to, and even when this thing is, it was, is enacted, we in Nashville will still have one of the lowest tax burdens of any city in the United States. Meanwhile, I don't know many of my friends who are, who are discussing giving up their $8,000 Netflix accounts because, again, if you project any small cost 15 to 50 years in the future, it becomes a bigger number. But people do complain that this plan seems to do almost nothing for the congestion they have to drive in every day. It does nothing on the interstates. Why isn't this a regional plan? It is a regional plan, and this is one of the, again... But it doesn't build anything in any other county. This specific moment doesn't because Senator Yarborough knows full well the IMPROVE Act that passed the General Assembly does not give us the opportunity to coordinate it, uh, to raise funds in a coordinated effort. Every single local jurisdiction that wants to do dedicated funding for transit, including Nashville, is has to do that independently. What we do know is that the entire Middle Tennessee Mayor's Caucus of all the surrounding counties has endorsed this plan because they know that it is a fundamental piece of the building blocks. And there's a roadblock to regional transit, which is it's one thing to get people into the city, but if you can't move them around once they're here, then you can't have regional transportation. And so without built, having this as a, as a foundation, uh, regional transit is, will be a pipe dream. You're both progressives in your politics. Uh, progressives usually don't support sales tax increases for any reason, yet this is the major funding for this. There are a couple other taxes that will go up as well for renting for, for rental cars, for hotel rooms, and for business to some degree. Was there no other alternative, Senator, but the sales tax? Why wasn't property tax included in this when the, Senate, when the, when the state legislature approved this plan? Uh, I mean, I think we tried to, to get as much on the table as we could in the state legislature, and uh, Nashville is using the tools that are available and, frankly, leveraging sales tax less than it otherwise could have by using so much that's going to be done by tourists. I should also note, though, that the same piece of legislation that we passed that allows the sales tax to go up, well, we also decrease the sales tax for everybody in Nashville by one whole cent when it, when it comes to the grocery store last year. So, I mean, most people don't notice that they got that tax cut, just like they're not going to notice that they get this tax increase. But uh, the truth of the matter is that most families, when their day-to-day -day need shopping, is going to be they're go are going to be you know, even to better. Councilman, one of the other large expenditures for this is to build an underground tunnel downtown to help move the buses around. We have very narrow streets in the downtown area. 
Um, Nashville's got a lot of solid rock, not too far below the surface. That's going to be enormously expensive. Are we getting ourselves into a big dig situation like Boston did? I mean, we certainly hope not. That's also one of the things that the Improve Act anticipates is that if you find yourself in a scenario where the feasibility uh, r reveals that there is something that's infeasible, you don't uh, implement that part of the plan. If we get caught into cost overruns, what gets cut? Do you cut down what you're building? Do you take the money from the general fund? Where does the money come from for overruns? I don't think we're going to get into uh, the, right, so the whole point of this is that you don't compete the, these revenues raised against anything that's happening in the general fund. If anything, probably something happens in terms of a reduction of implementation, maybe even more likely, and I'm, I'm aware that Councilman Mendez has kind of written about this, is that we slow the implementation timeline to allow those costs to, and to there, recover. And there are reserves that are built into right. this budget. To Huge start contingencies. But at the end of the day, right now, to get from one side of downtown to the other, the fastest way to do that is to go through East Nashville. People have looked at this particular plan and said, well, I like parts of it, parts of it I don't. There's been some talk, although not very specific, about, well, maybe we could make some changes in what's on the ballot. I'm not, what kind of changes can be made, Councilman or Senator, and how, do, how does that get done? We can always return to the people of Nashville with a referendum. So More that referendums? Is, that is, yeah, is sure. That, is that really, a, I mean, that's, that's a cumbersome way to have to make those changes. That that's is, the only way again, to Senator Yarbrough's point, the, the state legislature has given us this gift that comes with many constraints and we have to work within those short of passing you know some revision to state law and that's true on the revenue front that's true on the referendum front the only way we can secure the funding period is to go to voters uh, for a referendum and then within that if there are significant changes I guarantee you some of the changes will involve a conversation with lawyers to see if hey do we have to go back uh, ultimately, though, this plan is one that is derived not just from the work that we did on In Motion, which captured more public input than anything in Nashville MTA's history. It's also fully consistent with Nashville Next, which is a 25-year general plan with more, more public participation than anything in the history of Nashville that clearly specified that people of Nashville want growth along their corridors and in centers, and that and the movement around the city, anticipating movement around the region, is exactly what Nashvilleians have asked for. Metro Councilman Freddie O'Connell along with State Senator Jeff Yarborough our guests. They are for the referendum that is on for transit that is on the May 1st ballot. We're continuing our conversation after you watch these messages.